Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to another Wednesday Live. Uh, I have another new release for you guys, so I'm going to wait just a second until more people hop on. Uh, and I will, in the meantime, get my comments set up so that I can say hi to all of you. So please tell me that you are on and send me a comment so I can say hello to you. Heather from Ohio. I bet it's hot there. We have had the hottest weather. I don't know if you guys have been following the news, but us on the West, we have been cooking in hot weather and we're not used to that. So I think we're, we topped off at 117 here in Salem uh, on Sunday or on Monday, actually. So it's crazy. We are back down to the 80s now. So thankful, thankful for that. Um, hello, Sherry. Hello, Diane. Hello, Dee. Good to see all of you on here. Thank you for joining me. Uh, Teresa from Alabama. I bet it's hot there too and humid. Uh, Keely, hello. Hello, Nell. Good to see all of you. Thank you for joining me. Hello, hello to all of you. Hello, Barbara. It's a little delayed on here, so... Hello, Jane. <laughs> Hello to all of you. Thank you so much for being on with me. Uh, okay, it is 10.01, so let's get going. Uh, and I want to uh, show you what is new this time. So uh, this, is, um, this is our new Bible journaling release, all four sets. Now, this is something near and dear to my heart. I absolutely love this line. And I know that this may not be for all of you. So in fact, some of you may not be interested in this at all, but keep in mind that this works for all journaling, all books, all journaling. So just because it says Bible journaling doesn't mean that it must be used just for a Bible. Uh, we're going to actually, in this tutorial today, I'm gonna do a little one in a little journal that I have, this one right here. We're gonna do a little project in there and I'm gonna do a quick review on how to prep the page. So that is the key with journaling, uh, any journaling, whether it's Bible journaling or journaling in a journal or journaling in a book of any kind, uh, you need to prep your page. And what that does is it sort of coats your, your page. It's kind of a primer that you put on and it coats your page and it makes it a watercolor canvas. You guys, it's like magic. It is the coolest thing and it's really changed everything. So we have watercolor line, then we have a Bible journaling line, but they both cross. So you can use any of the watercolor in a book, in a journal, in a Bible, or you can use the Bible journaling in a book of a watercolor paper, a card, any of those things. So they really do cross over. It's the same technique. The, the difference is, is the most of the stamps in the Bible journaling line are made for margins. So longer and narrower, things that would go in a margin or in a corner. And that's what our projects are today. So let me show you what is new. So first of all, a new foliage set. I love, love this. These are bigger and we're gonna use these. In fact, uh, I'm only using a couple of things from the other watercolor sets. I want to really focus on these because they are so versatile. They're great for wreaths. They're great for um, frames like these. So these are also new. There are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frames in this set, and they are all for watercolor. So uh, we're gonna get through some of these. I'm, I mean, seriously, you guys, my hands are so inky today because I have made so many of these little frames. They are so, so much fun. Um, and they are made to go with, with these larger foliages. So these are bigger. They're bigger than the vine that we usually use. They're just, they're bigger. Uh, also these little icons that are also made to go in the frame. Now you can see that they're all pretty versatile. There's a little fruit basket here. This one is a little Bible. It has a cross on it. If you are not interested in Bible journaling, you can ink this without that little cross on there. You can make it a journal, you can make it a special novel that you like, you can make it a dictionary, you can make it any book, uh, something personalized for someone. So it doesn't necessarily have to be that. You can leave that little cross off. These are both the left and the right so that you can do them, mirror them on either side of your journal or your, or your page. Same with this little bird. Uh, we have we have this little guy uh, to the left and to the right. We're gonna use this one today, the little lantern. 
Uh, these two, these two are pretty straightforward. They can be used on either side. These are mirrored left and right. So this one is a, this is a really fun one. There are also new sentiments, Bible journaling sentiments that would go in those frames. If you are not, uh, again, like I said, if you're not interested in Bible journaling, we have other sentiments like these that will work in there also. So these are very generic things that you can put in there. You can also handwrite something that you want in there. You could stamp anything you want into that frame. Um, so we have got a lot to do at this tutorial. So let me just see who else is on here. Uh, Phil is in the house. And so he could probably answer any questions that you may have. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Miriam. Um, good to see all of you guys on here. Uh, I hope you like this tutorial. It was really fun. It's a little different for me, but um, I just, I love doing it. Anything watercolor is just, um, it's so fun and it's super relaxing. Okay, love the foliage, love the ferns. They are so fun. You guys, there is, the sky is the limit with these. They're really, really fun to do. Um, Yes, you can make cards and sets as well, just not in a journal or a Bible. Yes, that is absolutely true, Heather. You can. They're very, very versatile. So keep that in mind. Um, okay, I'm going to switch you guys around, and then I will be back at the end and answer any questions that you may have about this technique. And I'll try to keep my uh, one of my eyes on my iPad so I can see if there are any questions. But I do have uh, Philip is on there. Uh, hopefully, Joel is on there. And... Um, they can answer any questions. And I will go back through and uh, answer any questions that you might have if I don't see it. Okay, you guys, you ready to get going here? I'm gonna switch the camera over and flip you guys around and flip this over. Make sure I'm in the center of the screen here. Okay, I'm gonna start out with a little bit higher, but I will, um, I'll zoom in be when I actually start doing some of these projects. Um, let me go up just a little bit. I want you to be able to see this journal. We're gonna start out really quickly uh, just by prepping a page in this journal, uh, and then we can let it dry while we're doing these other projects. So let me just show you uh, close up again. Here are the new sets. This is the little icons. There are, these little birds are mirrored, so you get, you get two of those, the little fruit basket, uh, the little Bible and the candle. Uh, this is set. This is set number five one four. Here are all the foliages. Now this is a little misleading. These are pretty big, and you'll actually we're going to use most of these. Uh, but you can kind of see how they work here. Do you see how they sort of work with the frame? You've got your frame in the background, and then you're adding your foliage and your little icons here into the front. <clears throat> and here are all the frames. Lots of them. I've already got a smudge on there. So, um, yep, well used. Here are here are other sentiments. So these are these are very generic. You can use any of these in those frames as well. And then these are the new Bible journaling that um, will go into those frames. Okay, five four one five four one seven. Okay, so let's get going here. The first thing we're going to do is prep a page in here. And let me just show you. Here's one that I just did. Uh, in fact, I just did this one this morning. It's really, really quick and easy. You can see in this in this journal, I don't know if you can see really clearly, but the pages are a little yellow. Uh, it doesn't matter what what color really uh, if they're if they're kind of off white, if they're bright white, it doesn't matter. The ground will work, and it's actually pretty translucent. So I don't know if you can see where the line of the ground is. It it really it really fades out. And what I also love about it is it's very smooth. Now you can uh, smooth this out again just by using a terry cloth. This is one that I use a lot. You can see it's all stained up, but I use this and I just go over it like this and I buff it out and it is so smooth. I don't like anything um, really textured on my page and I don't want to feel anything gritty, you know, when I'm flipping around. So uh, you can see that this is so easy and so simple to do and there's no bleed through at all. There's no bleed through. So there's no need to iron a page. There's no need to um, mask anything off. You can just do this just like you would on a piece of watercolor paper. It's like magic. So um, 
We're gonna prep a page so that I can show you how to actually stamp in a little journal like this. So I just kind of, um, I've got a little page over here. And the first thing we're going to do is kind of mask off our page. Now this is a page protector. This is on our website, a Bible journaling page protector. It's number 5078. This is really handy because you don't want to get any um, of that primer onto the other pages because they'll stick together. And this will work both sides. So it'll work on the left or on the right. And actually I think this way is probably better here because I have more space um, for overflow. And I'm gonna be doing this corner right here. So I just slip that onto my page. It's gonna protect the rest. And then this just washes off with water. So run it under your faucet and you're good to go. Now here is, here is the ground. This is the golden brand and it's called Absorbent Ground. And it is for watercolor. This is the magic um, stuff here. And I, I have tried many of these. I've tried at least, uh, at least half a dozen. I think I've probably tried eight. And this one by far works the best. I love it. I love it that it's more translucent. I also don't want uh, things to cover the text regardless of what you're stamping in. So let's just stay, say you're stamping in a favorite uh, book that you have and you want to stamp something beautiful in it, but you don't want to you don't want to block the letters, the words. This is very translucent, so you can brush this on and kind of buff it out and you'll see the text, you'll see the print through it. It dries really, really um, translucent. So the key to this really is just keeping it on thin. You don't wanna just glob this on. So here's what you need. You need a flat brush like this. This is a one inch flat brush. We have these on our website. This will uh, do the trick. So you want to just open your, open your ground. This will last you a long time. There's a lot in here. It kind of looks like Elmer's glue to me. Uh, it's, you know, it's kind of thick, it's white, and you want to take just a little bit of this. So you don't, the first thing you want to be careful of, don't dip your whole brush in here. That's way, way, way too much. So you're going to just dip the tip about this much. And then you're going to start just putting this into the corner or wherever you want to, you want to stamp. Now you don't have to do the whole page. You only have to do the area, see how much I'm using? You only have to do the area that you're stamping on. That's all. And just kind of brush this on. Your page protector will protect the rest of your book or your journal. These, this is great in a planner too, you guys. It's so much fun to do these in a little planner. You can use the little icons. Uh, you can um, stamp little borders, little flowers um, in a planner. So fun. And actually there is a tutorial on Facebook with planners to stamp and use this technique in a planner. So check that out. Okay, so you can see that I have uh, put this on here. I've really just tried to make it smooth and I don't, I don't even know if you can see where I left off with this. It's pretty light but I've done basically this corner here, just this corner, because that's where I'm gonna stamp. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside and we'll come back to it later and stamp that into the corner. So remind me if I forget, you guys, because I have done that before. Said I'll come back to something and then completely forgot. So if I get to the very end and I have not stamped in this journal, please tell me, because I wanna be sure and do that. Okay, one more, one more look at this Golden Brand Absorbent Ground. Uh, there are many other ones, but I would recommend this one. I get asked all the time about gesso. Gesso does not work for this technique. Gesso is great for a lot of things, and people love it. Uh, it does not work for this technique. You have to use something like this. This is what I would recommend. It is, um, it's magic, you guys. I mean, that's the best word I could say for it. It's magic. Okay, so let's get going with a project here. I'm going to drop this down a little bit and zoom in. And we're going to do something with these little frames. So let me tell you what I, what I am using here besides those sets. So mostly what I'm using are the new 
the new foliage, the frames, obviously the frames, the frames and the new foliage set, which is loaded by the way, look at all this stuff in here. And do you see these little dots here? Okay, those of you who watch Kendra, you know her trademark dots. She puts dots on things all the time. She absolutely loves, kind of her trademark thing. She has been bugging me, you guys, for, I mean, literally years to do a stamp of dots. And I, <laughs> I'm like, why do we need a stamp of dots? We can just put dots in. And she's like, no, you don't understand. You need a stamp of dots. So here are Kendra's trademark dots. And I got to say, they are so fun. So we are going to use them because I need to tell her that I used them in the live and how much I love them. So they really are fun. And I snuck them into this set uh, just for her sake. But wow, I absolutely love them. You guys, I think you will too. Okay, so if you are using, if you have bought the, uh, the Bible journaling flowers and foliage set, we're going to be using this one here. If you have just the regular watercolor starter one, we're going to be using this one here. Same one, same stamp. And then in here, these little guys right here, the little buds. This is flower set four. And then uh, just these, these two in this one. And then I really try to keep it to um, what's in the set. Okay, so let's start with this one. This is a really simple one, a really simple idea. And what I've done is I've inked, I've, and I tried to ink these ahead of time just for time's sake because I want to try to get through as many of these as I can. And I know time always gets away from me. So I, uh, I want to make sure that I have time to get through at least a few of these little frames. So I have inked this, and I'll tell you what I inked it in, a 526. Now, there are lots, of, let me first say that there are lots of ways that you can use these, these little foliages, a ton of different ways, all different styles. I'm going to show you the way that I would use it. I love the watercolor look, and I love that everything looks a little abstract. So that's what I'm going to show you today. But by all means, you know, let your own style come out and try, try some different things. You know, they, they will work a lot of different ways and you'll be able to use them a lot of different ways. But like I said, I'm going to show you today what I would do with them. And then you can kind of take it from there. Okay, so we're going to use uh, two of the little foliages. We're going to use these little florals and put those into the corner. So the first thing that I'm going to do with this is mess it up kind of. Okay, so this is why I've stamped it in the watercolor and a light color. I also just really like that subtle look of this frame in the background. Now you could emboss it if you wanted to. That would be another thing way that you could use these, emboss them and then add your flowers to it. Uh, but I personally just love this watercolor look. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get my palette out and my water. And I think I can set this right here. And I think I still have space for my water here. Fit everything in the screen. Actually, I can move this over a little bit. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is add some color to my palette. And I'm going to use a cool green. So this is 249. Now you can use any, you can use any green. But I'm going to just start out with this one. Okay, this is going to be in my way. So we'll just I'll just tell you when I'm dipping my brush. Okay, I'm dipping my brush right now. And I'm going to just put some water on my palette with this green. And I'm going to brush on a little color. This is where I would start. And maybe starting up here and just putting in a little color and just kind of mess this up. Now, I know, you know, that may stress a few of you out. But uh, trust me, it is, it is so cute to do it this way. It really is. And like I said, you don't necessarily have to do it this way, but um, you can. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to add something at the top here. I only did the bottom left-hand corner, but I'm going to show you how you can do something on the top too. And so I'm going to mess this up here too. And that's why I really like this soft, this soft color. Now, when you go to stamp this, you could obviously leave these off, these corners off, but this to me is the simplest way to do it, is to just kind of paint on a little green area here. And like I said, you can use any of your, um, any of your greens. So I wanna make sure that that is pretty much dry. 
So it looks like it is. I've got quite a bit of water on here. So I just wanna blow on that and make sure that that's really dry. It looks pretty close. Okay, I think we're I think we're good here. So now I'm going to take my uh, one of my vines. So this one here, and they and these also are mirrored. So you have a left and a right, which I really love now. I I am doing that now more and more because I like that I like to have the bend in it and be able to see it on both sides. And then you have the versatility that you can do this. Now I'm doing it up and down, but you can also turn this and do it this way too. So I'm gonna use about half of this and I'm gonna use that same green and I'm going to stamp it kind of right next to it and maybe over one, just like that. Now you can go either direction and I purposely did it the opposite. See how this one bends out? This one comes in. So depending on which one you use where. Now on this one, I use this one and see it's, it's going out like this. I can also change that and just add one going out, okay? So let's go down here and let's just do the reverse here just to show you. Turn your, you know, turn your page so that you can get a good angle and just start like this. Now we're going to take the center area and really kind of mess that up, just like this. As you go out, you want to keep it more detailed. But this area in here that's kind of close to the center, you want to kind of jumble that up a little bit. And then just take your brush and just kind of carefully add a little water to these. Okay? So let's do, uh, let's do another one. Let's do this little foliage here. And I'm going to use the same green. And I'm just going to tap it in here into the bottom and maybe one more time. And then let's just do one out here. Turn, turn your paper. You know, I'll try to not go off the screen here, but um, you can turn your paper and it's so much easier uh, to stamp when you do that. Now this looks like a watercolor to me already. It really does. Now you can keep it more detailed if you want, but you know, I just love how this all kind of blends together here in the center. And this is what looks like a watercolor to me. Kind of blotchy, kind of faded out, and just so pretty. So now you can leave it like this. You could add, you know, a few little, um, a few little, little one, a few little, little ones, you guys, like this maybe, you know, kind of into the side and add a few little details like that. Or you could add the floral. So in this one, you can see I kind of added that that floral in here. So that's totally up to you what you want to put in here. So let's just add it and I'll show you how to do it. So I'm using the I'm using the purple and I'm going to ink the blooms. This is also a left and a right. And I don't need the whole thing. So just kind of where those um, where those come together and maybe one more there. and then just carefully add the water. You don't have to do anything with the stems. Those are okay the way they are. Okay, so let's turn this. Let's turn this and do this side over here. And we don't need the whole, we don't need as much now of this vine. So, or this one. So I'm just kind of, this is how my hands, this is why my hands are so dirty, you guys. <laughs> I have been doing so many of these. They're so fun. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this one. So that's the thing about stamping too. You don't necessarily need to use the whole thing. I mean, it's pretty big. So you'll be able to do lots of big projects, but you don't need to. You can use just a few. And the same here, over here. And 
Let's jumble this together. So remember the center, you're kind of just kind of, you know, messing this up in the center. And then as you go out, you're going to be more detailed on these leaves out here. And then let's add our little palm branch in here. So this one too. I mean, there's just, there's just nothing to it, you guys. These are so fun. This is something that you could make a whole bunch of. And then, you know, with these little frames, and then you can just add a sentiment, you know, later. And you've got something all ready to go. So let's just put one of these down in here. And maybe there too. So you could leave this just with the foliage if you if you like things that are just a little more simple. But that center, this area here, is where you just kind of want to jumble everything up. So let's do the other side now. <clears throat> and I don't this this has three blooms on it. I don't necessarily need all three. So let's just do the, these two here. And these two stems and it's going to kind of hang off like this and then you're just going to add the water and we are finished with this how fun was that okay so you could do it really simple like this one or you could do it a little more elaborate like this. Or maybe you just do two corners and you kind of hang those little florals off this way. So there's just, there's lots of different ways that you can do these. You know, the technique is kind of going to be the same. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. <clears throat> this is the circle. This is another really simple one. I just love this color palette. I love this green and blue. I think it is just, it's so cute. This is more in the center. Uh, now, I, I shortened this side just a little bit just to give you an idea, but you could obviously duplicate both sides and do both of these the same or both of these the same if you want to do that in the center, okay? So we're going to start out the same way, and I'm going to use a different green. So this is the this is an olive green. This is a 27, and I'm just going to put some of this on my palette. It's such a pretty color. And then I'm using, and by the way, I stamped these, these circles, the frames. This one I stamped in that warm blue I showed you. This one I stamped in a gray. Now this is an N52. You can see it's, a, it's more of a blue gray. Here's, here's what it looks like. It's kind of a bluish gray. And you, if you don't have this or you don't have something like this, you can use your dark blue and then just stamp it off. So basically this is a, a, a lighter version of this cool blue. So that's what I used uh, when I stamped on here. And on both of these, I stamped them off first. Uh, I saw a question here. Let's see. Uh, somebody said, when you had your sale on Bible, <laughs> I ordered everything I needed to start and forgot to order a Bible. Okay, you can use any Bible. It doesn't have to be the one that we have. You can use any and actually, it's not a bad idea to start with a journal because, um, you know, it's a little, it's, it can be a little intimidating to just start stamping some, something in your Bible uh, or in a book that you treasure. So you, should, you could easily start in a journal and then uh, that would be way less stressful. Okay, I thought I saw a question here about something. Um, Bear with me here. Uh, I just missed it. Oh, how do you get, how do you not get fingerprints all over your projects? Oh, okay. Yes. Hi, Renee. <laughs> that is a really good question. I'm not sure, but I, I rarely do. I rarely get, I don't know. Maybe I just automatically, you know, know which fingers are not inked up, but I rarely do get it on my paper. And you know, most of the time you can just stamp something over it and include it into your masterpiece. So, okay, so we're going to start by messing this up. And I'm just gonna kind of mess up some of this, this blue here. And we're kind of bringing this around, you know, this way. So I'm going to take some of this green 
and just kind of brush it in. You know, as far up as you think you're gonna go, you don't necessarily have to go all the way. You just wanna get a little, um, just a little bit of color in here. So let's let that dry a little bit. I also use that same gray with these ferns here when I put these ferns in. So I just, I really like this color a lot. I don't, we don't have it on our website, but I think we will be carrying it because I think it's such a great, um, it's such a great color, N52, N52. Okay, let's see if this is dry, it looks like it. So I'm going to ink, I'm going to ink my vine again maybe a little longer than half this time. So I can kind of go out this way. And let's do the other side and a little shorter on this one. So we're kind of doing it, you know, we're not exactly on the bottom of the circle. We're a little bit off to the side. And then, um, just put another one just right in here. I think that will work. Okay, so now we're gonna kind of mix up the center again. I'm gonna kind of blend this up a little bit here, kind of jumble it. And then add water carefully as you go out. It just kind of creates a a really cool um, background and this is a broader leaf so you know when you go to when you go to stamp this and add the water uh, it doesn't it doesn't blend the same as a tight little leaf would blend you know when you're doing something more in the background so I think that this really um, makes a difference as far as ease of stamping and getting the results that that you're looking for so let's go with the little the little daisy bunch, this is a 565, so the dark blue, which I love. And I'm just going to tap in some of this color. And you can use any, you can use, you can accent with any florals with these. There are so many different, uh, there are so many different options. So again, we're just kind of blending out this center and then adding these accents as we go out. So let me just clean this. This is also why my hands are just, this is how I clean them, clean my stamps. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm gonna ink this now and stamp it into the circle. See what a neat color that is? It's almost like a steel blue. It's so pretty. And then I'm gonna turn this and get a little bit out here and down here. So cute. I mean, really, you don't have to do anything else to it. You could you could do the same on the top of this one like we did on the other one. You could totally do that, but you really don't need to. Again, you know, as you're you're coming into the center here, you're going to kind of blend this together. And then again, as you go out, keep that detail in there. Almost more like a an accent. Okay, I just love that combination of the colors. I think that is so pretty. It's just beautiful. Okay, you guys, let's use the dots. Um, here they are. These are the little dots. There's no uh, exact way to use them and you can use any color. So we can use some blue and I'm just inking them with my, with my marker. And I mean, I'm just kind of putting them in wherever. Let me hold this up so that you can see it. Kendra's trademark dots. They really are cute, huh? And you can do as much of this as you as you want. I mean, just put in as many as you would like to put in. They're so cute, huh? I really do love them. I'm gonna have to admit that to her and tell her that I wish I had done it a long time ago because they're just so cute. Okay, let's go on to the next one. And we're gonna do one of these little icons, this little bird. Uh, I, I love these little birds, they're so fun. Again, I stamped it really simply. This is that same um, the sta same steel blue N52. I'm just calling it steel blue because that's exactly what it looks like. It's probably some sort of gray, the official name, but I'm not sure about that. So uh, we're going to, um, we're gonna use the little oval here 
And we're going to use this little guy and the little um, ivy vines. So I stamped this, stamped it off. And now I'm going to ink my little bird and it can go either direction. So I see everything this way, everything kind of goes this way, but if you like it going this way, you can certainly do that. So uh, I'm going to ink it in two colors, the dark brown 969 and the dark blue 565. And I'm gonna start with the blue and just ink this little guy all up. And they go right over the top of it with the brown. And of course, we will be stamping this off because that will be way too dark, way, way, way too dark. So I'm just using a scrap piece. Remember when you stamp things off, you need to stamp them off on a piece of watercolor paper. So not a piece of cardstock. And I can see, because these are clear, I can see exactly where I want this little guy to go. And I think that looks pretty good right there. And you could use two of them. You could put one up here too. That would be really cute. Now in this case, I'm gonna use my tiny brush. So this is my number one. Uh, this is a great little brush. If you don't have one of these, I would really recommend that you buy one. If you have done this for a while, you, um, you will really appreciate having this brush for these tiny, tiny little things. So here's the first step and I'm just pulling the color out of the lines. Now, here's the actual, uh, you, kind of the official color of these little birds. This might be a little bright here, but they're, they've got a dark uh, black head and little gray feathers and a little yellow uh, belly. But you know what? You can make them whatever color you want. There are no rules when you're doing watercolor. So you can change all that. And I'm just, I'm kind of staying in every little area here And then, you know, just like with any little critter, we want to darken the eye. So I'm gonna use my twin tones, this is my brown, and I'm gonna darken this, his little eye and his little beak. Let me hold that up. You can see how that really, really changes things when you do that. It just kind of uh, brings him to life. It really does. So I'm going to use some black. So it's just black and 25. And then I'm going to use some dark blue. So the 565, and I'm gonna mix these two together. So we don't really have a gray blue or a gray black. It's more of a blue black. And then I'm just gonna kind of mix these two together and then just brush this color on. You know, even, even this little guy at the top of his head, you wanna see a little bit of a highlight on the top of his head. And you could, you know, if you don't have a number one brush, I mean, you can use your number four, but you have to be very, very careful when you're coloring these in, so detailed. And then uh, probably another coat, their little heads are pretty dark. And then he's got, he's got these gray, you know, these gray feathers. So I'm gonna take some of this blue and just brush on, just keep every area separate. Just brush this into his little, his little feathers. And then, you know, just keep pinching your brush off and it will get drier and drier and easier to blend um, the colors. And just stay in each section, you know, as you're adding, as you're adding the color. And like I said, you could you could totally change this up. Okay, so now let's do his little belly. And I've got a really bright yellow. So this is a number 55. I'm not sure if we carry this one either, 
but um, for sure we do, we have this one, the 993. And actually we can just mix those two together. It's really, it doesn't really matter which yellow you use. Start where it's darker, which would be over here in the back, and then just bring the color over. And let it just kind of fade out. And then back under here, you know, this is where it's gonna be the darkest. So cute little guy and then let's just bring a little bit of this color up um, into his cheek okay and I'm going to take uh, a little brown now so that dark brown And just hit his his little legs. Actually, let's just you know what? Let's do it. Let's do them gray. Let's just keep them light. And then we can use some of this brown onto this little branch. And I think I'll just take my uh, my fine tip. So this is my twin tone, and maybe just make a few little lines in here, kind of in between his little toes, and up in here. And that is it. We've got him done. You know what? I think let's just go a little bit darker on his his head. I think this should be pretty dark. That looks better. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add in all of the detail. So again, we're going to kind of mess things up. We're just gonna kind of blend this out. Just get all of this kind of weighted down. And then I'm adding some greenery in here. So I'm going to uh, take some green from here and just add some color. Same in here and down under here. Just where you think you're going to be putting your, your foliage. And like I said, it doesn't have to go the whole way. It's just mostly here where it's, it's kind of starting. So let's give that a second to dry. And we're going to use, this time, let's use the, um, the Ivy. I love this. These are big too. So you can see how long they are. They're great because you can actually put them almost all the way around these little frames. But you can also do just small little areas. Um, so I think that's, that's really versatile. Uh, and I'm going to use a piece of masking tape because I'm just going to cover this little guy and make sure I don't stamp over the top of him. And we can start out with this one. And I don't need the whole thing, especially here. So I've got that in there. And then I, I think I'm gonna turn it so that I can see better. And this one's gonna be a little bit longer. And I can just kind of hang this one down And maybe we just put one back in here. And again, right here at the beginning is where we want to just kind of mess it up. Right here too. And then as we go out, a little more detail. So cute. Now you could leave it really simple like that. I, you know, that's just two stamps. Well, three counting the frame. But you can always add to it. So if you like things that, you know, are just full, then add to it and do some more things. Do some more, you know, 
do some more detail in there. So I'm going to just add, maybe I'll add some of this. These little details. And then um, on this one, you can see I added the little buds on there. So you can add a floral just like that. Or you can leave it just with the green. Um, just like this. You could also mirror this now at the top and do the same thing. I think that would be so, so cute. Let's do, um, let's just do one of these little guys. Let's pick a really bright, how about a pink? Pink would be so cute. Uh, let me just clean this off here. I think I had orange on it before. So let's do some little pink buds. And then a green vine. So the green vine, and then let me do those buds again because I just took all the ink off of it with my fingers. And then just, you know, just the tip, just the florals. That's all that you wanna, that you wanna touch is just the florals. So let's add a couple out here too. Let's see, and we're gonna swing that. So we're gonna use this one. And then a green stem, like so. But again, you know, I just picked this one, but there are so many different florals that you could use in this case that would work just, just beautifully. Okay, so, you know, on these, I would for sure sign these too. You know, we always sign our work. I would for sure sign this, just like any of those little frames. So here's the pink, here's the orange, both of them would be so cute. And that little bird is just, it's just the easiest thing to make. Okay, let's do one more thing here. We're gonna do a wreath really quickly uh, because we're gonna do it the same way. So I drew a circle. This is, uh, let me tell you how big this circle is. Um, let me find a ruler here. This is about uh, three inch, about a three inch circle, but you can make it as big as you want to. And, uh, what I did was I kind of separated in, it into five sections. So, I mean, you could kind of take your pencil and just kind of guess. One, two, three, four, five. Is that pretty close? Maybe this one is, maybe this one's off a little bit here. Uh, the best, your best friend is your pencil, you guys. I use my pencil so much. I think that's probably, it doesn't have to be perfect. It does not have to be perfect. I mean, obviously. Um, but just, you know, just so it's off a little bit, you know, so it's not four exact things on here. So we're gonna start out with a floral. So using our little, this little guy. And I'm gonna use that same dark blue, the 565. And I'm just going to stamp this uh, where these little dots are, my little markers are. And you know, you can obviously change this up so much. You can just change in your colors out, will change the whole look of it. Total, totally change the look of it. Okay, so once we've got that in there, now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add some green, just like I did before and mess this up. And just kind of go along here. Don't don't freak out at this point, you guys, because it does really look like you're totally messing up your your work, but uh, it will pay off. Trust me. And just you know, don't overthink it. Just put a little green in here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, it's better if it's not perfect. Just a little bit, kind of like this. And then uh, let's go in now and add some uh, water 
to this flowers. And just kind of dab, soften them up. I mean, you guys know how to do these. How many projects contain the Daisy Bunch? Billions. I mean, really, billions. Okay, so I've got my green in, I got my flowers in. I mean, it kind of looks like a mess, but it will come together. Okay, so now, move my palette all the way because I'm gonna be turning this a lot. So we're going to now add our foliage in. And let's start with this guy. And I'm using the same uh, the same 249. Actually, let's, yeah, let's use the 249. So I'm just using about, maybe about a third, about a third of it, and stamping it right over the top. And as I just go around, do the same thing. Just one, two. Same thing. One, two, and one, two. Wow, did I get off on that one? <laughs> These are really close, this one's far. You know what, let's just do this. Let's just go a little bit farther. There, perfect. Okay, so now we're going to, uh, guess what, mess up this area. We're just gonna mess this up. right next to the floral. And then um, just add a little water now as we go out. You could use your, you could use your tiny brush for this too, your number one. Probably may be a little bit easier. Okay, cute. So now let's add uh, some more foliage here. Let's use a different green and let's add this guy in. Just a one, just a one, two tap. You know, and if you're, if you're really simple and you just like a simple um, wreath, just leave it, kind of leave it at this. You know, it's so cute, just like this. And then we're just gonna kind of soften these, these little things up. You don't even have to do them all. And you can, of course, do any size, all different sizes. Just kind of hit it with your brush. You know, you don't have to be careful. So cute. Now let's add a little more definition into the flowers because we've got this broad leaf here. And if we're seeing the details in the leaves like this, we're gonna probably see more detail in the florals, okay? So I'm gonna take this little guy uh, and it is from the set, let me show you what set it's from. It's this, it's this one right here. These little kind of little miniature roses in the same set as this little bud. And I'm going to ink these in that dark blue and just kind of stamp them inside. Just a couple of times. Just so that we get a little more definition um, with these. And I think getting a few outside would be really cute. And now I'm going to um, just add some water to it. Same, same blue, by the way, use the same one. And I'm just dabbing. Okay, so like I said, you could leave it really simple like this, or you could just keep going and add more detail. So let's do that. Let's just add more detail. And let's do this one here, this green. And you can just kind of 
maybe do it like this. Kind of work your way around that way. So let's go to this flower. And just kind of go around this one. One, two. And then over here. One, two. And over here. And one more. How cute is that? So cute. And then, I mean, the dots, you guys. We got to add the dots. So here they are. So we'll just, we just can put them on anywhere we want. And you can tap them one or two, one or two times, you know, if you, um, just to get a little light and dark variation. How cute is that? Now we can also go back in if we need to add any more foliage. So uh, if you wanna fill out anything else, you know, add a little more foliage to this, you can do that kind of with an accent. Just kind of wherever you think you wanna add a little more. And just, you know, fill these wreaths out as much as you want to. Mine always get kind of big and out of control. I guess I just, you know, I know, I don't know when to, when to stop. And some people are much more minimalistic. Minimalists. And they don't, they don't want all this stuff in here. They just want it really simple. So you can do that too. Okay, you guys, for sure, I would sign this one. Absolutely, I would sign this one. So let's do it. Okay, and we are finished with the wreath. So same idea to add the green into the background when you're using these broad leaves. It just kind of gives you a starting point and it, it creates a um, that watercolor look where you have this accent, you know, at the end. And I think it's just, it's just such a beautiful look um, to do it that way. I think it looks so natural. Um, I think it looks so natural to do it that way. Okay, let's go on to the little journal. You guys, I remembered. So um, here's what we're going to make. We're gonna make this little corner here. It's all dry. And so I'm gonna take my terry cloth now, my little terry cloth, and just smooth this out so that I have a smooth finish. I mean, you cannot tell the difference hardly uh, between the page that isn't prepped. I mean, it's very, very smooth. It's so cool. Um, okay, so we're going to start with some color. And I'm just going to add some color into the corner, just like we did before. Just brushing a little color like this, kind of all the way up. And this is going to work just like your watercolor paper, the same way. And let's just let that dry for a second. And we can go with, we can go with any of these foliages. Let that dry just for a second. I should have prepped the other corner because we could be doing both, but you could do, you could do one here, one here, and then you could do one up here. You could do two, obviously two in the corner. You could do all four corners, which would also be really neat. Okay, so I'm going to go this direction here. And let me find the other one. So this one, and it's going to go this way. And maybe I'll just add another one right here. So basically I just, I just did it like an L. And then, of course, we're messing up the center. And 
and then we can add our little foliage in. So let me see where that sample was. So I used the blue and I used the dark blue with it. So in here, when I went to put the, the palm branch in, this one, uh, I used the dark blue. So let me just clean this off here really quick. And use the dark blue. So the 565. And we're just going to go like this. And then maybe just, you know, put one down here in the bottom like that. And mess up the middle, you guys. Just kind of mess it up. Same, same as we did on the watercolor paper. It's so fun. Now you could put some, you know, little florals in here too if you wanted to, but you know, it's really, it's really cute just to keep it simple. And then let's let's do some of these. Um, let's do a different green here. So let's do this green. This is the 177. And I can just put in a couple of these. Like that. And you really don't even have to um, add water to these. I mean, you can just kind of touch them. Just barely touch them. And then how about some dots? So cute. Now that would be so cute in either in each corner. I think that would be so cute. And you could go in and make something personal for someone. You know, you could gift them a journal with a few pages done. You don't necessarily have to go in and do all the pages, but maybe you want to do it as a gift and you watercolor the opening page and you write something really special in there. And maybe, um, you know, maybe you highlight, you know, if it's a calendar, you highlight their birthday or some special occasion or something like that. But it's a, it's such a, it would be such a personal gift to give to someone to do a journal like this and to have your own personal watercolor painting in it. I think it would be a treasure and really they don't, you don't have to spend a lot of time. I mean, you can see how quick that went. Uh, prep all your pages, just get that done and then uh, go back and stamp it, you know, add your color first and then add your vines in. I mean, honestly, you could just do the blue fern and this little foliage here and you could, you could be good to go. Add some flowers in there. I mean, just totally up to you how you wanna do it. And they dry really quickly. So this is all dry and no bleed, of course, no bleed in the background. So, and, and no puckering of the page. You know, that's the other thing. And this journal, I mean, this is really cheap paper. There's nothing special about it. It's not treated. It's a very cheap journal. And uh, this paper is very, um, very porous. So I have tried this on many types of paper, many, and it all works. So I just love it. I think this has opened a whole new avenue for the watercolor to be able to do it in something special like this and to create something for someone that is really a treasure. And, you know, we can, we make cards, we send cards, obviously, but how about a journal? How about a journal for someone? I think that would just mean the world to people. And especially if you wrote something special in it. And, um, when Kim, you know, when my girls were little, we did a journal back and forth and we would draw in it. I would draw in it and send it and they were away at school or they were somewhere far away. And uh, I guess they weren't that little. So when they were probably teenagers and I, um, I would, you know, color something in it, draw something in it, write something and send it back. And then they would draw something, write something, send it back to me. And we did that back and forth. And I think that would be such a fun thing to do with this too. You could start off a journal, send it to someone, they could write in it, and you could um, you could watercolor and send it back. So just an idea for you guys. I just, I love the idea of this. I think it's changed everything to be able to watercolor now on paper and in a book 
that you normally couldn't. So, and obviously in a Bible, you can do it in a Bible too. And these were, these are part of the Bible journaling line. If you are interested in doing it in a Bible, uh, check me out on bonniekrebs.biblejournaling on Instagram. That's my own personal account. And I do a lot of little reels and little mini tutorials on how to do it in a Bible. And if you don't want to do it in a Bible, follow along because you'll have some really good ideas for a journal or a book. So uh, that being said, let me flip you guys back over and see if there are any questions for me that maybe I have missed. So let me scroll down here and see. Um, wow, you guys, thanks for all the comments. I'm going to go through this. Um, thank you so much, you guys. Such encouraging words. Also beautiful. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Um, and I'll wait just a second because this is always delayed. So anybody have any questions about this technique, about how to prep your page, uh, what to use? Uh, watercolor markers, obviously, if you're new to journaling or Bible journaling or you're new to watercolor, this is all done with water-based markers. So it's just the, it's the simplest process. And now that you can prep your page, let me show you that uh, ground one more time. This is the golden brand and it's called Absorbent Ground. We have this on our website, so you can get it on our website. It will last you a long time. You could buy this and share it with someone. You can prep lots and lots of pages with this. I would also really highly recommend the page protector. So this, this one here, you slip your page in and add your prep to it, and then it will protect the rest of your, um, the rest of your book or journal. Um, using it on envelope. Yes, how cute would that be? I have got to try that. I have not tried it on envelope, but yes, I don't see why it wouldn't work. Absolutely would work. Um, if you do that, you might want to um, you might want to uh, add some sort of uh, protector on the front of your envelope because it could get wet. So uh, you might want to uh, put some kind of coating on that just to protect it. Um, I love that. Any issues with the journal paper buckling from the water? It really doesn't because you're using such a small amount. And even when you add that water to it, the ground, it just really protects the page. So there really isn't any issue with buckling. I mean, unless you're just going to, you know, just saturate the page. But I really have not found that that's a problem. And that's a that's a problem with a lot of things. And that's that's been the problem in the past if you try to... Uh, stamp or journal in a journal without prepping the page, you get a lot of buckling and your your the paper just cannot hold the water and the ink. So this really, I, it just changes all of that. Um, anybody else have any questions? Gonna try it. Yes, try it. You guys, try it. It is so fun. Um, sending your samples with random orders. <laughs> I can do that. Would you guys like me to do that? Just put them in random orders. I can send all these to the shop and we can just put them in random orders. I certainly can do that. Um, okay. Okay, you guys, I don't see any more questions on here. Great. I'm glad I answered them all. So uh, if you think of something else, uh, this, will, uh, this tutorial will be up on, our, um, on Facebook. It will also go to YouTube, so you can see it there in much higher quality. Um, check that out, and I will go through it and see if there are any comments that I may have forgotten or may have missed and not gotten to. Oh, Leah's on here too, so Leah can help you with uh, questions as well. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for being with me this morning. Thanks for spending your morning with me. Uh, I appreciate it so much. I always look forward to sharing new things with you. And uh, I just love, I just love, love, love this technique. And I love now that you can do it in a totally different way. So try it out. Get your watercolors out. Get your prep and try it out in a journal. Use the stamps that you have. Use the, use the vine, use the florals, use the things that you have. And then, of course... Um, if you want to add to your stash, check out the new Bible journaling stamps. They're available right now. So thank you all so much. I will see you next week, next Wednesday. I will be on every Wednesday now 
uh, for a while until we get through this new release. There are lots and lots of new things and I wanna make sure that you all know how to use them. Kendra is on once a week now. So those of you who are who may be new, Kendra is on Back to Basics. She was on last night. Her projects are so fun. She is quite a talent and we are very thankful to have her, uh, have her on. We are very different in the way that we teach. She is, uh, she is a great teacher and just so much fun. I always hear her laughing when she is on and I think that is awesome. So check her out. She is on Tuesdays at five o'clock Pacific time. I am on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. So you will have lots of watercolor and lots of tutorials. BonnieKrebs.BibleJournaling on Instagram. And then of course check us out on Pinterest. We're on, uh, check out the Art Impressions Facebook obviously, and we are all over social media. Thank you so much, and I will see you guys again next week.